Hey everybody, we're going to look at Match EQ. This is one of those tools which has been brought over from Logic Pro, and so it's a great addition into Final Cut Pro. This is something that I've been using a long time in Logic, and now in Final Cut, this is something that I'll be using quite a bit. So, what we're going to start off with is this particular clip. This was shot on a small handheld camera, and it's just using the onboard mics, which are not that great. But we're going to explore what it would take to record a nice dialogue piece and then match it to what it sounds like on the handheld. This doesn't happen all that often, but sometimes it does. And I've been in situations where there was some dialogue recorded on location in a place that has a distinct sound. And then because of some issue or another, they had to come in and loop that dialogue. And in order to match it, it's just quite a big task. And so a lot of times actually take that dialogue into a tool like Logic, or there's some other tools out there that do this really well. But now we can do this straight in Final Cut Pro on our storyline. So let's listen to it real quick. You're going to hear the original dialogue, and then you're going to hear two recordings of that that I said, because this is me talking. I thought this would be a great example because I can record my dialogue again in a nice controlled environment in a studio and then match that to the lesser quality. And I just record the whole conversation. I'll make sure that it doesn't make it on the... And I just recorded the whole conversation. And I just recorded the whole conversation. And I did two and cut them up so that we can then apply the match EQ to the first one and you'll hear the differences as we go into the second one. So, first of all, let's load it up. When we select the clip over here in the informational area, we have the audio section. Under audio enhancements, we have an equalizer. Now, every clip has this automatically turned on, this graphic equalizer, 10 band or a 31 band. But that's not what we're going to use, because when you come in here to the presets, at the very bottom, we can choose match. Now, when we select that, it then asks us to click on an additional clip, which is going to be used as the template for what we're going to then morph the one that we're applying this to. So, we're adding this to the voiceover 2, and we're going to use clip 1 as the source. So, let's click on it. Once it does that, you can then see that the Apply Match button becomes active when you click on it. So, let's do a quick listen. I know right away where I can see that this got boosted up. So we're actually going to, just to keep this in the same realm, we're going to turn it down just a little bit. Just a byproduct of the process. And I just recorded the whole conversation. I'll make sure that it doesn't make it on the... And I just recorded the whole conversation. And I just recorded the whole conversation. Back up just a little bit. And I just recorded the whole conversation. I'll make sure that it doesn't make it on the... And I just recorded the whole conversation. So you can see we've come a long way already. If we do these two together, you'll hear the difference. And I just recorded the whole conversation. And I just recorded the whole conversation. So we've gone a long way now from this original, more high-fidelity dialogue down to something that matches this a lot closer. Now, you're going to have to imagine Foley sounds of clothes rustling, and also some ambience added around it, like using Space Designer, which is a reverb space creator. And that, added with the Foley, would actually allow us to have a decently close match right off the bat. Not exactly, and it's going to take some tweaking in a lot of cases. And really, if you have to take this and match this piece of dialogue, and you're just able to do a couple lines of it, and you have the old stuff on either side, that's where you're going to have to really spend a lot of time working on this and making a match because that'll be the most obvious time. But if it's just really going for a lo-fi feel, you're doing some dialogue, you want it to sound like it's on a handheld camera, just take a piece of dialogue like this, use it as the template, add it on to whatever else you're working on, and you're going to get a fairly close rendition of what that sounds like. So this can be used just to give you an idea to push you in the right direction when you're going for a special effect. Okay, so now let's look at how this interface is. Come in here. This is what the Match EQ plugin looks like. So we have a couple things going on. This is an EQ curve, which is designed to, when you apply it to this audio file, make it sound close to this one. 
So that's what this actually looks like. That's the crazy curve going on here. So there's a few things we can do. First of all, if you want to see what this is looking like, we can turn on the analyzer. And let's push play on this. And I just recorded the whole conversation. So you can see that's a spectrum analyzer for audio. Turn that back off. It does take up processing, but only when it's active and you're seeing an action. So once we close this, it won't take up any processing. We can change if we see it before this curve. We can change it to see what's happening after this curve. We can also come through here and see exactly what's happening. The template is the analysis of this file. Current material is the analysis of this file. And then go back to the filter, which shows us how to get from one to the other. And then automatic just switches depending on what you're doing here. So we can actually load in a real-time template or real-time current. So we select that and push play, and it'll do that. So we can do less of a whole file and just a portion of a file. And then clicking on the equal sign gives us this. Now smoothing. We can make this less smooth. And this is a lot more accurate in terms of what it takes to get from this file to this file. So let's push play and hear that. And I just recorded the whole conversation. I'll make sure that it doesn't make it on the... And I just recorded the whole conversation. So you can hear a little bit of artifacting. In both cases, you can hear that. But as we get smoother, you'll see that this is really more generalized here. So let's hear this. And I just recorded the whole conversation. I'll make sure that it doesn't make it on the... And I just recorded the whole conversation. In some ways, the smooth, more smooth one is a little bit more pleasant, but I think that to get a little bit more realism, we go back to kind of where we were at the outset. Now we can also switch, go to an inverse relationship, or we can make this even more extreme. So this is really going to push it. And I just recorded the whole conversation. I'll make sure that it doesn't make it on the... And I just recorded the whole conversation. Obviously not really going to make it sound more realistic, but it may be something you need at some point to really exaggerate that. Or we can take it and just pull it down a little bit if we feel like we want a little less of it all together, make it a little bit more natural. And this talks about the type of EQ algorithms going on. So in addition to everything so far, we can also click right here on the graphic interface. and We have another equalizer built straight into this to really change things around. So say that we're not happy with how much high frequencies are being lost. We can now click on this and add some of those back in. And we have some modifiers here. So if we hold shift, make that bigger, wider, or much more narrow, much more of a precision type EQ band. And then, of course, we can always hold Option to reset it as we let go. So, we can add things and Option click on it to reset it. So, that just allows us a lot more control. So, another example of how we might use that is to pull down some additional low frequencies, widen that up, and pull them down. So, it might just be that I really want to get rid of any low rumble and also just to make it really sell that, get rid of some of that. Let's see how this sounds. And I just recorded the whole conversation. I'll make sure that it doesn't make it on the... And I just recorded the whole conversation. Too much. Let's pull some of those back in. And I just recorded the whole conversation. Okay, so you can see how that works. We can keep on tweaking it depending on the needs of the project. Okay, so that's Match EQ. One last step that sometimes you'll find yourself needing to do. So it's great, we can do a lot of it here. If you're like, you know, I need to just change a few more things, you can always come out to the audio filters and effects, go into EQ, and we have a lot of different EQs here. The one that I recommend a lot of times would be Linear Phase EQ. Let's actually double click on it to add it to VoiceOver 2. Comes up here. Very similar interface you can see, but this allows us a, just an additional curve which we can then tweak if we need to. We're going to look at equalizers in a separate place, but this is another tool that we could use here if we wanted to, to really fine tune how that sounds. Again, 
Then you'll need to, if you really want to mimic this, add in some Foley type rustling of clothes. Also, you'll want to add a little bit of space around the sound to make it sound like that small room that the original was shot in with all those early reflections off the walls and hard surfaces in there. So there's a few other steps to take to get all the way there, but this first one is actually a great step, which gets you a lot of the way there. Okay, that's Match EQ.